Hi, I welcome you in the last demo in the Async Expert course. In this demo, I would like to show you how to use ASP.NET Core together with modern APIs like Channel of T to improve performance and reliability of your own application. So in the beginning, I created a GUID controller. It is the single controller in our application and it's very, very simple. So it creates a new GUID and later on, it returns the GUID to the user. So you may say that this API produces new random GUIDs. That's all. However, under the hood, it also tries to grab a telemetry of the request. By grabbing telemetry, I mean grabbing all claims from the user and grabbing all headers. So it's very simple telemetry. It only gathers very simple information about the user. And what is worth to mention is that the grabbing telemetry is only a nice business side effect of providing the random GUIDs generator endpoint. So creating a new GUID and returning that GUID to the user is the primary responsibility of the web application. Then the second responsibility, which is only nice to have, is grabbing a telemetry and then reporting that telemetry item to the user. So after grabbing the telemetry and creating a new telemetry entry, our endpoint calls service.report and it passes an item and the cancellation token for the request. So now let's take a look on the slow diagnostic service implementation. Under the hood, the service is very, very simple. It receives in the controller a telemetry HTTP client and by calling report and simply under the hood calls client.send. That's all. So let's focus on the telemetry HTTP client. As the name suggests, it's a custom HTTP client or call it better a uh, wrapper around the HTTP client that has one primary focus, deliver a new telemetry to the endpoint. So it is a single HTTP client for the all calls. It's registered as a singleton. So the HTTP client under the hood will be reused for different requests. Then we have our primary method called send. It accepts a telemetry entry and the cancellation token. With the item, we simply call JSON serializer serialize. We don't need to talk about any performance improvement here since it's only a demo. Then we call content equals new string content. We pass a JSON string. Then you pass UTF-8 and application JSON media type. And then we simply call client.postAsync and we pass an endpoint. In that example, I want to call a base address. Then we pass the content and the cancellation token. And of course, we implement dispose method and simply later on we call client.dispose. However, as I mentioned, this telemetry HTTP client is registered as a singleton, so it will be reused between the calls. When we know how the slow diagnostic service and the slow path works, let's try to optimize it. I created a second endpoint, which is called fast. It also creates a new GUID and it also returns that GUID to the user. However, after grabbing a telemetry, it doesn't call any asynchronous operation. What it calls? It calls service storage of type fast diagnostic service storage. Then it calls writer.trywrite. I think after async expert, you may know what kind of item is under the hood, right? Yes, you guessed. It's a channel. Fast Diagnostic Service Storage is a wrapper around our unbounded channel of telemetry items. It's a bounded channel, so it can hold many, many requests. It has no capacity limit. The channel is configured to support and optimize a single reader because we are going to read it with only one reader. We will see in a minute. Then it's optimized to support multiple writers, not only a single one. Why? Because we are going to write to this channel from multiple requests at the same time. So when we know where our items are delivered, because they are delivered to the telemetry entry and they are written for the writer, let's take a look what can read it. I wanted to give you a better approach how you can handle this nice to have situation. Of course, you can offload it, for example, to some kind of queue. We could create a new queue, use service bus and service bus and other stuff and put a new command, then we could create a command handler. However, introducing a messaging to this simple project that simply sends new data for HTTP client would be an overhead and an over-engineered solution. So let's try to do it in memory. I created a fast diagnostic service. It is a class that inherits from background service. Background service is a type which is introduced to SP.NET Core and it implements a hosted service. So it gives us a nice API for working with hosted services in ASP.NET Core. Under the hood, it has a cancellation token source and it provides one abstract method that needs to be overwritten and it's called execute async. 
This method supports cancellation by receiving a cancellation token called stopping token. We can use this token for many things. For example, we can iterate in a loop until the cancellation is requested. This base class also provides a nice way of starting our service. For example, we can override the start async and start our service asynchronously. For example, by initialization, we can call, for example, database.initialize connection to have a better throughput. Then we can also write a logic for stopping the service or simply override the dispose method. So unfortunately for yet, we don't have any iAsync disposable, but we can combine stop async when with dispose. So let's get back to our fast diagnostic service. The service receives a storage and telemetry HTTP client. Later on, we override the execute async method. We receive a stopping token. So we know when the application has a graceful shutdown. Then we create a while true loop. Then we create a while loop and inside the condition we call storage.reader wait to read async and we also pass the cancellation token. So in the condition of this loop, we simply wait until there is one or more items to be processed in the channel. Then we call storage.reader.tryread and inside the if statement, we call client.send and we pass the item that was read from the channel. As you may remember, there is no synchronization between checking whether there is a data and the real reading the data. So in theory, another reader can go here to this line and read our method instead of us. So to make it more elegant, we are putting this method inside the if condition. However, in this specific example, we are sure that we will have only one reader, so nobody else can read this data, just only us, because we are the only background service. However, to have it elegant and nice, we still put it to the if statement just to be sure, because for example, in the future, somebody may add another background service to increase the throughput. So within the try read, we call HTTP client .send, and that's all. So we are passing the telemetry through the channel to the background service, and the background service takes one item called HTTP client, then it goes back to the queue, it waits, and then it starts another HTTP client. So we went through the situation when we were starting a new HTTP client in our request. So the fast action simply grabs a new telemetry entry from the user, then it pass this telemetry entry to the channel by using the writer. Our background service starts in the background, so it scans the channel and tries to read an item from the channel. When we have the first request, our channel receives the data and we can send the same telemetry entry to the database, but now from the background service, so we are not starting many HTTP requests to our database or to our external provider. So the fast path is different from the slow. In the slow, we were sending new HTTP requests within our own request. In the fast implementation, we simply grab the telemetry entry, we pass that telemetry entry to the channel. In the same application, we have a background service that starts together with application, and inside the execute method, it waits until there is a data. When the data is available in the channel, it reads a telemetry entry, then it grabs that telemetry entry and calls telemetry entry client.send. So we increase the throughput and potential performance of the application. Let's try to benchmark it. It's the 10th module of the async expert. So for sure we shouldn't benchmark it manually or use benchmark.net for it because it is a HTTP application. So let's try to use a nice and useful tool. Personally, I like very much a Bombardier tool. It is a quite modern application written a few years ago. It's quite popular on the GitHub because it has more than 2000 stars and it's written in Golang. So if you have a Go runtime installed, you can simply call go get, then pass the address of the repository and that will install the latest version on your machine. Then you simply call Bombardier and you can pass a flex and the URL to benchmark. So to benchmark our application, we need to start it in the release mode. We shouldn't start it with Visual Studio and especially with debugger because it can reduce our throughput. So to have the real numbers, let's call .NET run in configuration release. So I'm starting the web API, the Casper server with the application. Okay, my application is working on the port number 5000. So our server is running in the background and from the new terminal card, or even from the completely new terminal, I'm simply calling Bombardier, then I pass the URL and I pass the slow path. 
Bombardier decides to use 10 seconds and 145 connections. So after this amount of time, we will see the results. And here we have the numbers. So our current throughput, so the throughput of the application is 43 kilobytes per second. And within the 10 seconds, Bombardier was able to provide closely 2000 requests. So now let's try to run it again, because you may say, okay, maybe the application was not warm up correctly. Maybe some methods were not JIT, or for example, so queues were not ready. And maybe the Bombardier uses outliers, so that requests that were very, very slow to calculate some data. So after calling the Bombardier once again, we will see, let's say, the double checked results. In this example, it's a little bit faster because our throughput is 56 kilobytes per second and the number of requests increased from 2000 to 2600. Okay, so we have the numbers for the slow path. Now let's try to benchmark the fast path. So I'm simply changing the action name from slow to fast. And after 10 seconds, we will have the numbers of the optimized version. Any guesses? So the fast implementation was capable of handling up to 48 thousands of requests and our throughput is increased to more than one megabyte per second. So it's quite a huge difference, right? So in the terminal, we can simply calculate that our fast implementation gave us more than 80 times boost. As you may see, by introducing a channel of T and queuing mechanism, we may schedule additional work to the background service. Background service has a really nice API that can help you with background operation in .NET. Let's take a look how to register a background service because it's a little bit different. So in the configure services method, we are calling uh, at singleton for telemetry HTTP client, the same for the st service, the same for the storage. Remember that the storage needs to be a singleton because we would like to share a channel between the reader and the writer. Then we call at hosted service of the fast diagnostic service. The at hosted service extension method is a little bit different, but it's quite understandable. So under the hood, it tries to add a new implementation of the T hosted service to the collection of the T hosted services. So as you may see, our T hosted service was registered as a I hosted service. And then ISP.NET Core under the hood during the startup simply starts all implementations of the iHosted service. I hope this demo gave you a better understanding how to use channel and how to use in-process communication, for example, from the request to internal background services to schedule and offload additional operation. In this example, we simply moved sending HTTP request from the request processing to the background service, and that increased our throughput a lot. So thank you very much for the attention and please remember Channel of T is your great friend. Thank you.